Welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. As of June the 3rd, I have had Red Dragon now for one full year. So a full year of Model 3 ownership. At this point here, I just ticked over 16,000 kilometers. So what has it been like? When you actually own and drive the Model 3, your perspective changes entirely. Those things that seemed important in those early days might mean nothing at all today. How many of you remember those early, early days just before the Model 3 was released where panel gaps was the largest controversy that you could imagine it would be? Panel gaps, you could drive a truck through, everyone complaining that the panel gaps showed that Tesla did not know how to manufacture a car. I also remember the furore over the Alcantara lining, the headliner was meant to be Alcantara, and then they switched it, and everyone was up in arms. How can you do that? How many of you also remember the heads-up display that it was guaranteed we would get, and we didn't? And you know, when I think back now, I cannot believe we ever got so worked up about such stupid things. Those things that seemed so important in the early days, we don't even think about. So what is important? Let me give you my top 10 takeaways for what's important now as I've experienced ownership for a year. Starting with number one, and I call this the emptiness. And it's the emptiness of the cabin. It's the emptiness of the dashboard, of that area where all of the instrument and controls should be, but aren't. And it's the beauty of one simple console, one simple screen, on which all of our controls are located. Now, of course, in those early days, everybody predicted that the downfall of the Model 3 was its lack of instrumentation and gauges and binnacles and buttons and dials and all kinds of little things. And people said, you'd never get used to looking at a computer. You need multiple controls. And that turned out not to be true. I think it took me a week, one week of ownership, to be completely comfortable with the concept of glancing slightly to the right to see all of the details about my trip. Destination, time, temperature, remaining charge. All of those things were neatly located on the left side of the console and are easy to reference at any one time. So the emptiness of the dashboard is thoroughly refreshing. After decades of owning cars that had more buttons and dials than could be crammed into any conceivable space. Number two, the openness. The openness with a glass roof above your head, with a large windshield in front of you, with a hood that recedes down out of view, allowing you to see what's on the road. The feeling as you look up to the sky, and you can do that occasionally when you're on autopilot, the feeling as you look up that you see clouds and skyscrapers and there's the openness above you. And that goes for the passengers in the rear seats as well as for the driver in the front. And even today, all of the versions have the all glass roof. And that feeling of openness is unmatched. I've been in many vehicles where everything felt very closed in. And the Model 3 feels like you're outdoors. Number three, the power. It never, never gets old, I can promise you. That feeling of pressing your foot on the accelerator ever so slightly and the car leaping forward effortlessly. Uh, those times you're going up a hill and just for the heck of it, you put your foot down and the car just shoots up the hill. Uh, those times when you're at an intersection and you just want to get in front of all of the rest of the traffic and a quick press of the accelerator, and you're almost one block ahead of the rest of them. Even my long-range rear-wheel drive vehicle gets zero to 60 miles an hour in about five seconds, just over five seconds. For any normal person, even my Model 3, which is the slowest of the threes, is unbelievable. And the feeling of quick acceleration just does not get old. And not a day goes by where, just for the fun of it, I step on the accelerator, let the car leap forward when it's safe to do so. We won't tell Dragon Lady what that's doing to the tires. Number four is the silence. Now, uh, all electrical vehicles, all battery EVs, have a much quieter performance than any combustion engine car, for obvious reasons. 
The road noise still does intrude to a degree, uh, but the wind noise is very, very reduced. And I've reduced mine still further by putting what could be described as a kind of a large O-ring around the top front piece of roof glass. It uh, fits into the groove and you carefully wedge it in all the way around and that stops the wind from whistling down into those very narrow channels and makes it even quieter. I am going to be road testing uh, double door seals in a few weeks time and that will make an even bigger difference in terms of shutting out a lot of the external noise. But even to uh, compare it to my Nissan Leaf, which I have owned now for seven years, the amount of noise that I hear in that car is significantly higher than the Model 3. So they've done a tremendous job of isolating the Model 3 cabin from the road, from the wind, and from the surrounding noise of the vehicle. So beautiful, beautiful silence in that car. Number five, the stickiness. Now, that's not a technical term. You won't find it in many car magazines, but to me, sticky infers a relationship between the car and the road where the car literally hugs the surface of the road. There is no skidding, there's no wallowing from left to right, uh, there is no feeling of uh, loss of traction, and that's what I mean by stickiness. And it's amazing, it's a combination of uh, good tires, good suspension, but mostly a low center of gravity, the battery pan being set between the front and the rear wheels, uh, being so low that it resists rolling and pitching. And I can tell you that when you drive that car around tight corners, it's a fantastic feeling. Just being able to go out in the countryside, take the car through some winding turns, you want to do it again and again and again. So real stickiness between the car and the road itself. Part of the car's uh, road holding and performance ability is in a little feature called regenerative braking. And what that means is that when you lift your foot off the accelerator pedal, the car actively slows itself down, so much so that you really do not use the brakes unless you're coming to a complete stop. Regenerative braking allows you good control of having to slow down quickly. It also allows you not to have to wear out your brake pads. It's a great feature. Uh, I was horrified getting back into my leaf this Saturday uh, to take some garbage to the dump. Now, I wouldn't take garbage to the dump in the Model 3. So I took it down and when I took my foot off the accelerator pedal, I was horrified at how little the car slowed down. Oh, the light showed that regen was in effect but it really did not slow down very much. That may be because the leaf is pretty old, or it may be that I've so gotten used to the regenerative braking on the Tesla that to me, it feels like there was none. Number six, the freedom. And by freedom, I mean the freedom to get out and drive where you want, not to have to think and plan for days. Where will I find a charger? Will it be occupied? Will there be a lineup when I get there? And by and large, thanks to Tesla's network of superchargers, you just drive. My long range rear wheel drive Model 3 has a range of 520 kilometers. That's amazing. I wouldn't drive 500 kilometers without stopping, even in a combustion engine car. Add to that the fact that I'll never struggle to find a supercharger because I simply have to tap on the icon on the screen and it will list the superchargers in my surroundings. It'll tell me how many of the charging stalls are occupied and how many are free. Added to which, Elon is replacing the old chargers with ones that charge at twice the capacity, 250 kilowatt. That will mean that it charges in such a short time that there's hardly any delay on the trip. So with the ability to go such a long distance in one charge, the ability to find a supercharger easily and quickly when I need it, and the ability to charge very rapidly, usually 20, 25 minutes, and then get on to the next one, it gives an unparalleled sense of freedom. That is not my experience on our poor, humble, original Nissan Leaf. I drove to Kelowna once, 408 kilometers. I struggled to find charges along the way. We had to take the long route to get there. It took me something like 11 hours. It was horrific. Uh, added to which we missed a charger and they had to creep all the way back. So the Tesla, the Model 3, the long range battery especially, unbelievable feeling of freedom. Number seven, the music system. 
Uh, I'm sure most of you have had the opportunity to see my upload Model 3 great music system or best in the industry. So if you have not, uh, just click on that link over there and uh, go watch it. But very simply put, with 15 speakers spread throughout the car, with intelligent distribution of those speakers and subwoofers and bass speakers and uh, tweeters, mid-range speakers, with modes like immersive sound, the music in the Model 3 is unparalleled. You can sit there and you can listen and enjoy your music and never want to get out of the car. Sometimes Janine has to come down and find me sitting in the car, just chilling and just enjoying the music. Tremendous bass good range of mid-range frequencies and treble, good placement of the tweeters and the immersive speakers. It's just unparalleled. I'm sure if you spent a few thousand dollars, you could get a system that was even higher quality than what we have. But this is a stock standard installation. This is what comes with a car. And all I can tell you is I've never enjoyed my music so much in the car. I've never been able to hear good bass when the car is going at 75 miles an hour on the freeway, but I can with this car. Number eight, autopilot. I have to say, I do not have full self-driving at the moment. I have what was termed enhanced autopilot. And that doesn't exist any longer in terms of offerings and we have autopilot and then full self-driving. But I can tell you that I did not miss it before I had it. When I got it, I realized I could never do without it again. See, there's two major situations in which autopilot is indispensable. Long freeway-based trips, stop-start traffic. In both of those, the stress is taken away from you. You're able to drive and you feel relaxed. The car's in control, you are watching it, your hand is at the wheel, but it's like you're a passenger sitting watching a driver and then marveling at how well that driver is actually handling his duties. Autopilot gets better all the time, automatic lane changing, freeway exits, summons. Sometimes I'll park the car in the tent that I have for Red Dragon and I'll get out of the car and find that I'm a foot too far forward or eight inches too far back. I get the phone out, I hit summons, I bring the car back and it's fine full autopilot we're not there yet and i think that it'll have to be a decision i make closer to the time but autopilot or enhanced autopilot what a useful feature number nine the updates the over the air updates we're used to it on our phones we're used to it on our computers even cameras have firmware updates and we've become used to it in our teslas now i think about it logically and i think why have no other companies adopted over-the-air updates as the de facto means of improving that car? Why is it that Tesla is still so far ahead? And it comes down to one important variable, vertical integration as opposed to horizontal integration. Now think about the regular car companies. They may have literally hundreds of individual suppliers supplying bolts and nuts and gauges and dials and wiring harnesses. Tesla tries to create most of those in-house, vertical integration. See, here's the difference. If you have a situation where horizontal integration is the way your company works, it means that if you want to redesign a major area or a major component within your car, you're going to have to liaise with 10, 20, 30 different companies, giving them a clear idea of what you're aiming for, demanding certain specifications for these new components, and then having to try and make them all work together smoothly and seamlessly, that's a major undertaking. But if you like Tesla, and these are all within the same factory and the same enclosed ecosystem, and Tesla make the electronics and the software and they integrate them together, well, you've only got to get your own employees on board and get them to play according to the same game plan. And it's a lot easier. You have a certain culture within the company. And the culture in Tesla is very heavily oriented towards software solutions. So when Tesla talks about over-the-air updates, Tesla has the software, they have the servers, they've written the software, they've integrated it into their computer-based controls. And that's not what any other car company can say. And so until the other companies begin to practice vertical integration, 
as opposed to horizontal integration, they're not going to catch up. It's as simple as that. Great article in Clean Technica, I'll reference it down in the description below, that tells exactly why it is that these other companies do not get it, will not get it, will find it very, very difficult to move into this new paradigm, software control of their vehicles. So over the air updates, absolutely rule. Your car gets better the longer you have it. New features get added. Improved braking, improved acceleration, improved range are all things we benefited by from the Model 3. One year ago, I took possession of the car. It now has 30, 40% more features and capabilities than it had the day I took it off the, off the lot. That sets Tesla apart. I cannot tell you the excitement when I see the notification. New update available, and I go and instantly install it. If there's one good reason to buy a Tesla, that's it. And number 10, profiles. So saving a driver profile can only be done for the driver. It's not done for the passengers, the backseat passengers or the right side passenger. So here are some of the things that go into your personal profile. The position of the seats. There are 12 adjustments that can be made and you can adjust the seat to exactly your liking. You can adjust the side mirrors and you can adjust the steering wheel, the height of the wheel, the proximity to you. And when you put all those together, you can save them and give that profile a name. So in my car, I have Peter, Janine, should call it Dragon Lady, really. Uh, Jillian, Philippa, plus a few guests that I've had in the car who've created their own profiles. Got to delete those. Here's the other thing. You can create special profiles. For example, you can have one profile where the side mirrors turn right down and give you a great view of the sidewalk or the curb so you don't scratch your rims, which I slightly did. I've got to get that fixed as well. So creating a profile, giving it a name. How about easy exit? Create a profile where the seat goes right back, where it lifts up, where the steering wheel lifts up and goes in, and then you can get out of the car more easily. So save that as a profile called easy exit. None of these were in any particular order, but I think you can see from these 10 that I've listed, owning a Model 3 is a really, really exciting and satisfying experience. I've never ever been excited about a car beyond the first or second week. After a week, it was just a car. After a year, Red Dragon is just unbelievably special. Kudos to Elon, kudos to the team at Tesla. What a car you've made. This is gonna set and break records every, every year until the Model Y comes out, and then that's the one that's gonna set the records. So once again, thank you for listening. Take a moment to subscribe. Just take a moment to hit that notification bell. Thank you once again to all of those of you who comment and leave positive, encouraging, helpful comments. And anyone about to purchase a new Tesla, uh, please make sure you use a referral code. I'd like it to be mine, but if you have somebody else in mind, that's fine. It gives you, at this point in time, 1,500 kilometers, or 1,000 miles of free supercharging so you can get to experience the benefits of supercharging as you drive long distances. So my referral code is down there. Uh, also in the description. Once again, thank you so much. I'll see you next time.